Welcome to Dynamic Path Followers on a Blob Shape. Today we're going to create these circles dynamically, attach them to this blob path, fill them with rainbow colors, and have them scale up and down as they infinitely loop around the path. And the fun part about today's lesson is that a majority of the code is going to be taken from three previous lessons. We'll start out by snagging code from this lesson on creating circles on click. We'll then pull some code from our infinite path followers lesson. And to wrap it up, we'll use this quick tip here to dynamically distribute colors throughout the whole array of circles that we generate. So as a quick overview, we'll start out by drawing the blob shape using Boxy SVG's arc tool. We'll then do a quick overview of our starter file and code. We'll dynamically create SVG circles, add the circles to the path and animate them, and wrap up by filling the circles with rainbow HSL colors. And remember, a lot of this is review, so we're gonna go quickly through each file and grab the code we need. Let's get going. So to get the blobby shape that we want, I'm gonna go over to the spline tool and I'm going to select this arc option. Now watch when I draw, we sort of get this sort of hint that we can draw in these sort of circular shapes, all right? So I just want to very gently bend around something like this, come down here and then connect there, all right? Now this final one here isn't as smooth as I would like, but we can just go to the edit tool, select this point, and we can pull the handles to just sort of smooth it out and make some fine adjustments. Maybe I'll take this point here, bring it up a little bit, do a little of that. All right, we just wanna have it basically smooth. And for now, that's pretty good. Now, it's really not in the right place on my SVG canvas here, so I'll use the transform tool to just bring it right in the center and I'm gonna shrink it down just a touch, all right? So right now, that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna go over to the fill tool. We're going to remove the fill. And for the stroke, we're just going to thicken it up a little bit and we'll do like a medium gray, all right? That should be just about right. And before we get to coding, we're just going to go over to the meta panel and I'm going to give my path a class of my path. Let's hop into the elements panel, right click, copy the outer SVG and move on to our next step, a quick overview of our starter file. Here in our HTML, we simply have a demo div where I'm going to paste in my SVG. And now you'll see my path shows up nicely over here. In the CSS, we're just setting a background color and you'll see that the demo div has an opacity of zero to start out. But when we go into our JavaScript, we're gonna use GSAP to set its opacity to one. We just use this as standard practice to avoid any flash of unstyled content. Now it's important to note that in the JavaScript settings, I am loading in GSAP, MotionPath plugin, and GS Dev tools. I've got a timeline set up with nothing in it. You'll notice that this ID here is set to path followers. That's just how we get GS Dev tools to display the name of our animation. Now, I know I want a lot of circles, so I've created a create circles function that takes in number of circles. And then inside of there, we're just going to run through this loop and do a bunch of stuff for each circle. Right now it's set up to create 16 circles. If we pop into my console, you'll see that we are logging out numbers zero through 15, just to show you that we have no errors and everything is working as expected. Lastly, we're sending our timeline into GS Dev Tools and we're getting rid of any trial warnings, all things we've done before. So with that out of the way, it's now time to generate some circles inside my loop here when create circles is called. So we've created SVG circles dynamically before. So here in my student dashboard, I have access to all my Creative Coding Club courses and for SVG animation with GreenSock, I'm just gonna click on Start Course. And over here we have all of our chapters. We're gonna just pop in real quick to Programming SVG. And here on the left, we have a number of lessons and we're particularly interested right now in creating SVG elements with code. 
In this lesson here, I showed you how we can dynamically create circles on click and add them to the SVG and animate them and also center them perfectly around where my mouse is clicking. It's an awesome lesson. And of course, it comes with a code pen that we can grab some code out of. And although all the new circle creation happens here on our click event, it's very important that we have the SVG and namespace variables set up properly. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just copy these out, jump into my file, and we're going to paste them here. Now in our document, we do not have an element with an ID of SVG. So I'm just gonna set this over to query selector, and we're going to do the dot demo div that contains the SVG, all right? So that's accurately gonna point to the SVG right here. We can head back on over to the circle demo now and just cut all of this code out that creates an SVG circle, gives it some attributes, and then appends it to the SVG. Cut it, jump back into my demo, and we'll just paste it on top of this log. And now in this code here, I wanna point out that we no longer have an event.offsetx because there isn't any click happening. So we can't really get the coordinates of the mouse. So we're just going to hard code in the values of 100 for now. And we'll just test to see that this code is in fact working. If we hop over here, you will in fact see, all right, it looks like there is a circle being added, all right? And if we right click and do an inspection, we should hopefully see that we do have a bunch of circles being added, all right? So everything is working fine as far as generating the circles goes. So the next step is adding the circles to the path and animating them. Hey folks, Carl Schuff here. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do all that YouTube stuff like comment, like, subscribe. It really helps my channel grow. Now, if you wanna learn more about GSAP or increase your skills as a creative coder, please check out my full GSAP course bundle at creativecodingclub.com. Each week I create a new lesson for my students, which has allowed me to create a collection of over 250 GSAP lessons for all my students for a very low price, all right? So I've worked with GSAP for years, okay? I've helped thousands of people in the Green Sock forums, and I've really sort of figured out what it is that beginners stumble with, all right? So I want you to avoid all those common pitfalls and really enjoy the experience of bringing your artwork to life with code, all right? So please, just check out the courses, it's a great way to support the channel, and I know you're gonna learn a ton. See you in the club. So fortunately, we just did a lesson on this, so we can head into the Motion Path plugin chapter, where this lesson will end up. And the last lesson was Infinite Motion Path Followers here, okay? And what I did was I showed you how to get multiple elements to follow a path in a seamless loop. So we're just gonna hop on over to this code pen here, and let me just pause the animation. And if you saw this lesson, you will recall that we looped through all of our circles and we dynamically set the start position by taking the current iteration in the loop and dividing it by the total number of circles. Again, this is covered in depth in the lesson, but for now, I'm just gonna take this code right here, which puts each circle on the path and animates it, and I'm going to copy it out We'll head back over to my file, and right after we've appended all of the circles to the SVG, I'm going to go ahead and paste in that code. And it's important to note that inside the loop, we do have access to an I variable, which is very handy, but we don't know what circles.length is. So we're going to replace that with num circles. And we don't have something called a circle to animate. We have something called a new circle. So we just have to update this to be new circle. And our path does not have a class of path, but it has a class of my path. So although we are copying and pasting to save time, there are some minor adjustments that we need to make. Ooh, that's fun. All right, let's play that again using GS DevTools. And we certainly have a bunch of black circles moving around our path. You may notice that we're getting cut off a little bit here. That's because SVGs by default have overflow set to hidden. So what we can do is just tell my demo SVG to have its overflow set to visible. And now you'll see that we can see all the circles and they don't get cut off there at the bottom. Now, right now they are probably a little bit too big. So let's just hop into our JavaScript and where we're setting the radius 
Let's just make that a little bit smaller and make it 20. And what you're going to notice is that the CX and CY are pretty much getting overridden when they get put on the path. But with that change being made, you'll now see that we have smaller circles and they're moving around in a continuous seamless loop. It's actually going quite fast, so let's just make this duration 8, and that's a little bit more reasonable, okay? But there you have it, equal distribution of multiple circles around a path, and it's infinitely looping. Technically, each animation is only playing once, but if we were to set GS Dev Tools to loop, I could talk here for a while and it would just keep going, or when it goes back to the beginning, there would be a seamless restart, all right? You won't even notice that it already happened. So let me turn that off and pause. And to finish up, we'll fill the circles with rainbow colors. Back here in my student dashboard, I'm gonna jump into B-Sides, Bonuses, and Oddities, and this is one of my favorite courses because it's a huge collection of all my weekly releases. We've got a ton in this chapter here and loads more. But way at the bottom, you're going to see that we have HSL Rainbow Spread, okay? And this is a video that walks you through spreading HSL colors across many different elements. So in this quick tip video, there's the first demo that just uses a set to fill all the circles with this HSL color spread. And this one here uses a loop. It's got a nice fun little animation built in too. So since we're using a loop in our motion path file, I'm gonna jump over to CodePen here and steal all this code, all right? So here there's a loop going on. We're using num circles again. And we have this comment here, change color by stepping through HSL. And you will see that we're modifying the hue by dividing the current iteration by num circles, all right? That's gonna come in handy for us. So I'm just going to copy out this value right here. Do a command C and we'll head back into our demo. And I'm going to do a gsap.set here the target's going to be new circle. And I'm not changing the background color, I'm changing the fill of an SVG circle. And I'm just going to paste in that value that I copied. And the next time this runs, you'll see we have this awesome animation and we're using those HSL color values. Now they may look a little bit dim here and that is because the saturation is set to 50%. Let's just make that 80%. And there you go, it brightens it up a little bit, okay? So that's how we can add all of these colored circles to follow a motion path by just going through three previous lessons. And now that we have the basics down, I'm gonna add a little bit of pizzazz by just modifying this tween slightly and adding a new one. So I'm just gonna do a little magic copy and paste here, and I'll just walk you through the changes. On the tween we've been working on, I added a repeat of 20 to it, and I added a new tween that's going to scale up each circle, all right? It's gonna have a shorter duration, it's gonna repeat more times, have a repeat delay, yo-yo true, so it'll go back and forth, and I'm gonna stagger them in by multiplying the current value of i times 0.5 and that's gonna get us this, okay? So now everything's moving along the path and you have this staggered scaling going on also, all right? And it just gives it this really nice blobby effect as I like to call it, okay? And with all those repeats and everything, you're going to have a timeline that has a total time of 168 down here, okay? So it's gonna be going on for a very, very, very long time. And all the way if we jump to the end and play, you'll see it just keeps going, the scaling is still running, and everything is working just fine. So I encourage you, you know, add some more tweens in here, play with these values. You know, once you have the basics down, it's up to you to get creative and add new stuff. So hopefully this lesson inspired you to take what you've already learned and try new things. See you in the next lesson.